Good morning, everyone. Um, so welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North Carolina and South Carolina students, um, sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at CACRAO.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be made available within a week at that same website, CACRAO.org. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. Hello everyone. Um, we are just going to quickly introduce ourselves real quick. Um, my name is Morgan and I work with Charleston Southern University as an enrollment counselor and the homeschool relations coordinator. Hello, I'm Melissa Vess and I'm the assistant director of admissions at Southern Wesleyan University and we're so glad to have you with us today. Hey everyone, I'm so glad to have you. My name is Toby Tate and I'm a representative from Gardner Webb University. Uh, I'm the acting transfer counselor and also what I would like to consider a homeschool liaison just from prior experience of my own self being homeschool coming into college. Um, but again, so happy to have you. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about um, what it looks like coming into college as a homeschool student. Um, so we're going to kick it off by talking about the admissions process here. Um, we'll kind of each talk about what our own school does, if there's any kind of differences or anything like that. Um, but I know for Charleston Southern University, um, the admissions process for a homeschool student is very, very similar to that of any other high school student. Um, you're going to apply on our website just like a normal student would. Um, there's going to be a couple of other things that you need to turn in, such as like your high school transcript, if you have SAT or ACT scores, um, or maybe if you need like a personal essay or a resume, if you don't have those scores. Um, we are something called test flexible this year. So um, because of COVID and everything, our admissions process has changed just a little bit here. Um, I think all of our universities have kind of adjusted a little bit what that looks like. Um, but for us, um, that just means that you can turn in scores if you have them and if you're able to. It really is in your best interest to, um, if you can test, um, just because you'll be able to get more money and things like that for school. But if you can't, then there's some other requirements that we would need um, for you to be able to be accepted into the university. So that could look like an essay or a resume or maybe a virtual interview or something like that. As far as your high school transcript, um, we take that just like a normal high school transcript. So all we need on it is your parent's signature. Um, we consider that completely and totally official. And any kind of requirements that we have, um, like for us, it would be four years of English, three years of math, a lab, things like that. Um, we can also uh, work with you to make sure that what you have meets those requirements and we're just super flexible with that as well. At Southern Wesleyan University, it's very similar to what Morgan just shared with you. You would need to just go on swu.edu and complete our online application. And we also, because of COVID this year, are going to be test optional starting with the spring semester and for next fall. But we do, as um, also as Morgan said, we encourage you to take the SAT or SAT if at all possible so that you can get the maximum amount of benefits from financial aid. In South Carolina, for instance, you know, there's more aid offered with more chances for aid as long as you have the SAT. So we want to definitely encourage you to go ahead and do that. We'll talk more about financial aid at a later time. But also we uh, would ask for your transcript and also we do accept it from the mother with if for a homeschool mom with the signature and uh, or from the homeschool association. But if there's not an association, we accept it from the homeschool parent with the signature as well. 
So we also would like to make sure you get the maximum amount of benefit from it. And, and now that we are test optional, there will be a little bit more required in the way of essay and recommendation if you do not have the ACT or SAT test scores. Awesome. So um, I will just kind of start out by saying Garden Web is very, very similar to both of these um, from what Melissa and Morgan have explained. A lot of the institutions as well as as well as Gardner Webb has gone to the test optional basis. So to begin the process of admissions, it is very similar to that of any first time freshman student coming from high school. Um, you know, you just go online or go to the Garden Webb website. There's an apply now link you'll uh, click on. And once you fill out that free online application, it, you know, you're pretty much done. It's it takes no time at all. There's no essay. There's no application fee. Uh, maybe I would say 10 minutes worth of your time. And then once that's in, obviously you will be prompted to submit transcripts. You may even be prompted to submit a test score, but again, there is that test optional basis that we are on now. So if you choose not to, or if you are unable to submit a test score, that will not determine your eligibility for you know, being accepted into Gardner Web. I do recommend, like Morgan and Melissa had said, you know, testing if possible is a great idea. Not only does it allow for you to you know, test your own knowledge and you know, have your own personal growth, but it also allows you to have that on paper if for whatever reason you do need it. If you're applying to a school that may request it, it's good to have. So in, in times like this with, with the crisis that's going on, I, we can all completely understand testing is not a very easy thing to you know, get into your schedule. But if at all possible, I do strongly encourage it. But do keep in mind, you know, test optional um, you know, being an ability that we all can share now is a very good thing. Again, like Melissa said, as far as scholarships and things like that go, We'll talk a little bit more about the financial aid process here in just a moment. But again, as a, as a homeschool student, do not let that scare you whatsoever that you may be looked at differently than any other student because you won't be. We just need to get the application, um, the transcript, which again, if it's through an association or if it's just a signed copy through the you know, legal guardian, or even if you dual enrolled like through a college. Um, I personally dual enrolled through a college out of Georgia whenever I was in high school. And it, again, through a homeschool program, but I was able to get my transcript from them. So if that's something that you have to go about doing, that's, that's one way to do it also. Um, but again, that's, just keep in mind, it's definitely a um, scary process for people who may, not, who may be stepping into something that you know, may seem overwhelming, but again, we're here to guide you and we're here to help in every way we can. Yeah, and Charlene has a great question. Um, she said, do y'all think that schools will keep the test optional status or revert back to using test scores for admission decisions? decisions in the future? Um, that's a great question. I think every school is different and we're just pretty much testing it out right now and seeing how that goes. Um, we're definitely flexible right now because of COVID, um, but schools in the future may choose to keep test optional, test flexible, or they might go back. It really is up to the university. Um, so we really don't have any way of knowing right now. Um, I think that the best way to find out is just in the future to, to ask those schools. but um, definitely right now, there is a difference between test optional and test flexible. So um, test optional is more like you don't have to turn in scores if you don't want to. You can just turn these things in or like you don't have to turn anything in extra sometimes. Um, with test flexible, that's more like only if you like are unable to take the test, um, then you can turn in these items. But taking the test definitely helps you to get admitted and and helps you with money and scholarships and things like that. So um, there is a little bit of a difference with that, but um, yeah, we, we do take um, SAT, ACT. Now we take the classic learning test as well. So um, I know that's really big in the homeschool community. Um, that is one option. And I believe that you can take that online. Um, so that's another option that's out there. And then I don't know, do y'all also take the We are in the process of discussing that, but have not um, completely gone there yet. Hope to in the future. And again, uh, that was a great question that was asked. And uh, some of our decision for the future also may depend on, since we are in South Carolina, the state requirements for aid and for South Carolina students having the SAT attached as a way of getting more money. Uh, you know, there's a very good chance as long as that's the case that we would would not remain test optional in the future but that's all up for discussion like you said based on what happens with the entire COVID situation how things look for next year we'll just have to wait until after next year to see what happens 
I think I share about the same answer. Um, again, as, as for the test option ability and things like that for now, it's kind of locked in place of not knowing. Um, we're, we're setting at a standstill until we see how the future pans out, whether or not we'll be able to go back to requiring tests or you know, things like that. And as for the other tests that you had mentioned, Morgan, we have not fully decided if we will accept it in the future years or not. Um, as of right now, we just we typically ask for ACT or SAT. Awesome. Um, so with those extra materials that we were talking about, whether that be um, test scores or a transcript or anything like that, um, every application is a little bit different. I know for CSU's application, you can um, attach those items right on the application. Um, if you don't have those handy when you're applying, that is perfectly fine. You can actually like log back into your account later and just attach them, or um, you can send them directly to your enrollment counselor. So based off of where you are, what city you are in, in South Carolina or um, North Carolina, wherever you're at, um, you will be placed with an enrollment counselor. Um, the best way to find out is just to email the admissions office at your school and find out who that is. So that way you can get their email address. Um, but they'll also be able to answer all of your questions about the admissions process and things like that. Um, so I did just want to quickly mention that. Did y'all have any notes or anything you wanted to tack on to that? I think you said it very well. Um, again, it's the same situation with Gardner Webb. If you're going to have your own admissions counselor who's going to be here to you know walk you through the process as far as getting materials. Again, the same way as with CSU, you know, feel free just to email us or just call the university and we can get to you with the correct person. In the situation of needing documentation, um, we actually allow for self-reported scores to be attached to our application itself. So if you're applying online, it's probably going to ask you, you know, do you want to report a self-reported GPA? So you tell us what your GPA is, and we can base a certain conditional acceptance based off of that. And then once we get official documentation, we can move forward from there. Now, again, I can't speak for the other two institutions being represented. I'll pass that back to Morgan and Melissa to discuss. We too can do a provisional acceptance off the self-reported, but it would be official once we have the official documentation. So yeah, that's a really good point, Toby that we would allow as well. And we too have our admissions counselors are by territories. Well, we have one for transfers and for internationals, but, but for the freshmen incoming, which I believe most of you would be at this point, uh, we do have by territory. So we, you would just email the admissions office, like she said, we can be sure to let you know, or on our website, swu.edu, there's videos of each counselor and territories listed there that you can find out. Yes, we also do, uh, self-reported scores and GPA as well. Of course, we do double check that um, after we get your transcripts and your official scores. So um, we can make a decision off of um, like unofficial scores if you screenshot them and things like that. But um, before you begin classes in the fall, we'll definitely need those official documents. Um, Carolina had a great question. She said, what are types of extracurricular activities that you'd like to see from a homeschooler? Um, for us, really, we are looking for things like any kind of like leadership roles um, that really stand out. If you um, maybe lead a small group in your church or maybe you are the head of a club or organization, um, things like that just really look good for homeschoolers. Really, what we're looking for is just to see that you don't um, just do school and then nothing else. <laughs> um, so really, the more things that you're involved in, especially especially leadership roles, um, just shows up really well uh, at Charleston Southern University. At Southern Westland, we would not require you to have those type of extracurricular activities. Of course, they're always beneficial to you. I think one big thing would be helping you integrate into the college um, scene. It would be really helpful already having those leadership roles and having maybe your music groups or athletics or various types of uh, groups that you may be involved with, mission trips, things like that. We would not require that for you to be accepted, but I do think it would be beneficial to you once you get to college, it would be beneficial in your career later. Already being involved with various types of groups is going to help make it a more seamless transition into the university of your choice. And from Garden West's perspective, um, we can agree that what, what Melissa said in regards to it not being required um, to have any kind of extracurricular activity and for admissions and things like that. Now, we would highly recommend that you have your outlets, you have your going and doing and staying involved. 
and having that extracurricular life just because it does allow you to better acclimate to the college, collegiate life, um, being on campus, you know, staying involved, getting in clubs and organizations. There's all sorts of ways to do that. I'm sure not just speaking for Gardner Webb, but for any institution, you know, there's going to be all sorts of student life. So having that connection prior to college will really help you to blend. One thing too, it helps when we see it on your application, it may help us go ahead and get you connected and get you involved. It'll give your admissions counselor a heads up on what type of groups may interest you and can give you more information about those. And especially if it's athletics and you're wanting to meet with a coach or music groups, a week, I don't know, I feel like the others probably do, but offer music scholarships. You do not have to be a music major, for instance. And just once they see you have musical interests, that's the type of information they would share with you. Even your campus tour when you came on campus could be customized and specialized to go in the areas where you have more interest. So we always want to know those extracurricular interests. Not only they help you, but they also help us get you connected with the right people when you come for your campus visit. And speaking of like getting acclimated before college, um, one of the best ways to go ahead and prepare for college as a homeschool student, I would say is dual enrollment if you have the chance. Um, so I believe all of our universities do offer dual enrollment. Um, Charleston Southern University offers something called the Scholars Academy. And you can begin it your junior year of high school. And as you're doing the Scholars Academy, um, all of those courses are guaranteed to transfer into CSU. Um, I, I think for us, it's about $500 a course. And then um, if you come to CSU, then you'll get $250 back per course for up to four courses. So you can get $1,000 back. So ultimately, it could end up being only $250 for you um, per course. But that'll really just help you um, get to know a some of the professors as you work with them online, um, or if you take in-person classes, it'll help you get used to college work before you get here, because it obviously is um, a lot different than high school work or, or work for homeschool. Um, so I would, I would highly recommend that. I know that for CSU actually right now, because of the COVID situation, um, our prices are actually gonna lower a little bit. Um, so keep an eye out for that. If that's something you're interested in, you can find the Scholars Academy on our website and look for that. That's an excellent point, Morgan. Also at Southern Western, we do offer dual enrollment and encourage dual enrollment. And especially for homeschoolers, I think it helps tremendously with that individual responsibility, maybe having the student contact the admissions counselor and help get things set up and teach them, you know, even more independence that I'm sure that you homeschool moms strive toward um, as they're growing and maturing. So that um, we recommend that. And also we have a, um, for the first time this year offering an associate's degree to our dual enrollment students. So in your junior and senior year, you can take up to 30 hours each year and go ahead and get an associate's degree while you're in high school, which is a tremendous less expense. And that's of course, if you, you know, you're still going to be meeting all of your high school state requirements for graduation, of course, with that as well. But I know a lot of homeschoolers are so advanced and are ahead of the game, have already met a lot of those requirements and are looking for extra things to even take. So we have special advisors for our homeschool students and any dual enrollment student from any school. And they will advise you on the things you need to take. For instance, if you're thinking about being a pre-med major, once you get to college, you can be advised on the proper science classes and the things that would help you most with psychologies and things like that that would help you most for your college major. So that's something to really keep in mind with your dual enrollment, not only working with your guidance counselor you know, as a high school public school student, the same you would work with maybe a, um, your association counselor. Well, we have those advisors for you that can actually work with you and advise you on a full schedule if you'd like to take that. And our cost is uh, $100 per credit hour, so 90% discount. So $345 includes your technology fee plus for a three-hour course. So $345 for a three-hour course. And then you also would have whatever cost your books would be. And those are offered, we have online courses, we have hybrid courses that meet once a day um, on campus and then online as well to get the dual experience. And then we have um, all, totally online. So you can go online, on campus, or a hybrid mix of both for a lot of our courses. And all of our summer courses are online, which gives you a, a lot of flexibility as well. I'll continue on with a little bit more in regards to your options for, you know, getting a dual enrollment out of the way while you're, you know, still in high school. 
As for our garden rep perspective, I won't highlight a, a whole lot about the institution itself in regards to dual enrollment. I will tell you though, for, I mean, from a garden rep perspective, we do have a great online program that, you know, you can take by credit hour course. It's not necessarily saying you have to go, you know, full fledged, you know, full time student, but if for whatever reason you wanted to look into getting a class or two in, uh, especially in times like these, online options are also always great. But what I would highly recommend, this is more from a personal um, experience, just as a homeschooler coming out and looking for, you know, what to do, because it is a, it's a scary process going through this whole thing. I personally went to a community college, um, just a local community college. And again, that's not to down any of the four year institutions. Um, they probably, you know, they have great programs as well. I can tell you, you know, both the representatives that I'm here with today, I know that their programs are great. Those are schools I would definitely recommend looking into in regards to, you know, pre bachelor degree level. You know, if you're looking to get your associates, um, like Melissa was saying, they've got that new associates degree pathway, great. But if you're just looking to secure a few hours, some of the best options are to look at local community colleges. And what that really allows for you to do is just to get, you know, a class or two in at, at a level that's not less than a four year college, but at almost an in between and even more comfortable for you as a homeschooler. Just because, you know, as a homeschooler, you're not used to being in a large classroom setting with a lot of other students. Um, you're also you know, not used to the difficulty of the classes that's gonna come along, come along with it. But we do also know because we've seen it as counselors like Melissa said, homeschoolers tend to be somewhat more ahead of public school students. And it's just because, you know, you guys strive for that greatness. You, you show us that, you know, you're academically sound, so you know what you're doing. But again, I would, I would push heavily on the idea of dual enrollment in some capacity. Yeah, I think uh, dual enrollment also is an opportunity to save some money in the long run, too, as you're transferring in those uh, credit hours. So whether you do it at a community college or um, at a university, um, for your university, then um, you're definitely going to save money. Um, but speaking of finances and things like that, um, we'd love to just talk to y'all a little bit about how to pay for college. Um, something that we see a lot of is um, students getting sticker shy. And what that means is like, for example, if you're at a store and you see something that's like really expensive, you're like, I can never afford that and you walk out, but you walk out before you find out that they're having like a 50% off sale. So um, all that to say that when you are looking at a university and you're looking at the prices, whether it's for tuition or room and board or anything like that, it will never, almost never cost that much. <laughs> um, I know so many students that come to CSU that um, at first, they were a little bit afraid because they are a small private university as the other two uni universities here are today, um, but uh, they got so many scholarships and grants and things like that that they hardly had little to no cost left. So with all that being said, um, your first step is to fill out something called the FAFSA, which is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. The fastest and easiest way to find this is to Google FAFSA. So if you just Google FAFSA, it'll take you right to the website. Um, it's like studentaid.gov and all you need to do is fill that out. Um, that is gonna open up October 1st for seniors. So if you're a senior right now, October 1st to mark it on your calendar because some grants and things like that are first come first serve. So there are parents out there that, and some of y'all might be nodding your head because you know that you are one of those parents that stay up until midnight on October 1st to fill out the FAFSA. Um, but the quicker that you fill it out, uh, the better. Um, so just because also as they send out all that information that you fill out on the FAFSA, they're gonna send that out to universities. It will take a while for us to put together a financial aid award package for you. Um, and what's all going to be included in that is going to be um, a, a merit scholarship for Charleston Southern University, at least a, a merit scholarship of some kind that's based off of normally what would be your GPA and test scores. Um, this year, it's going to be determined a little bit differently, but definitely dependent on that GPA for sure. Um, it's going to include any kind of like grants or anything that you qualify for. Those are based off of like household income and need and things like that. Um, and then it's going to also include any kind of like loans that you qualify for or anything like that. Once you receive that financial aid package, you'll be able to determine how much money you have left um, after those scholarships and grants and things like that um, to pay for, for college. Um, the best way to get that paid off is 
Um, one, you're going to want to talk to your enrollment counselor and see if there's any kind of scholarships or anything that they can help you find. Um, the second biggest way to find it is um, just to go to our scholarship page on our website. Um, there are scholarships on scholarships on scholarships there. Um, so there's everything from institutional scholarships that we give um, just based off of maybe you have like a certain kind of major that you're doing or maybe you're musically inclined or you're doing an athletic scholarship or something like that to um, it explains like the state scholarship um, if you're in the state of South Carolina um, we do take Hope Life and Palmetto Fellows if you're outside of the state of South Carolina um, we offer a out-of-state scholarship that's two thousand dollars per year um, so that is one thing that you'll just automatically get from being out of state and then it also talks about external scholarships as well. Just we know that it can be kind of weird and sketchy to go out and try and find scholarships out on Google because you never know which website you can trust. So we have a list of websites that Charleston Southern University has gone out and found for you and have said, these are legitimate websites. You can trust them and put your information in um, and they're going to be able to help you find some good stuff. Um, so uh, with all that being said, there is tons of stuff out there. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we have tons of uh, students here who have just spent time searching for scholarships and applying for things and have little to no cost left. So if you put in the effort, um, really college cannot be a huge cost. So. That was a really great overview, Morgan, with financial aid and same with us with the state and federal um, scholarship and highly recommend filling out the FAFSA just as soon as you can. Um, after on or after October 1st that um, we will our financial aid counselors and the other universities well will work with you to help you find any monies possible sometimes people do have a little bit of sticker shop shot when you first look at it but um, you know you don't want to write it off and say oh I can't go to a private institution or you know I can't go to a four-year college because there are so many ways you can get money for scholarships. So first of all, we encourage you just keeping your grades up as high as you can. If you are able to take the ACT or SAT, doing as well as you can on those because a lot of those determine, you know, the state scholarship money. And this year, ours will be like Morgan, a little bit different on the ACT, SAT, as far as the amount of money you would get from Southern Wesleyan. So the universities, we offer scholarship money as well as the state, as well as the, there's a federal Pell Grant based on need. Then as Morgan also mentioned, you have athletics and music and so many other things that stack up. Another thing you can do is talk to your homeschool association contacts or your friends. Uh, some large corporations offer scholarships that you can apply for and like um, Charleston Southern, we also have on our website a whole list of places where you can go to find outside scholarships outside of the state or federal government and our university. And that is really way. one thing we offer is a church matching scholarship up to $1,000 a year. There's some churches that give scholarships to members of their youth group, for instance. And there's different kinds of scholarships like that that you know, may not have crossed your mind before. So just you know, keep uh, looking for those scholarships. Talk to you know, any friends of yours and connections that you have because civic groups, large corporations, often there's essay involved, sometimes perhaps an interview, but usually it's just an essay to give and you can get sizable um, scholarships that can stack on top of each other and add up to sometimes cover all of your tuition even. Awesome, so again, I will reiterate a lot of what Morgan and Melissa just said, um, even from a garden web standpoint, FAFSA is number one, you know, get that in as soon as you possibly can, October 1st and then on, you know, the sooner the better, like they said, but just because certain grants, they, um, you know, they will run out but you're automatically going to, as far as Garden Web, you're going to get a Pell Grant. If you qualify for that, um, you'll get what we call NC Need Based. So if you're a North Carolina student, you'll get NC Need Based. Um, we've also got some other scholarships that weigh into that as far as out-of-state students. Um, we've got some other things that are going to come into play uh, as far as external scholarships in, you know, in reference to that. I would probably say the best bet to look for outside scholarships is a website called fastweb.com. Um, I know that that's something that these other counselors I'm sure have heard of. Um, it's actually vetted by the Department of Education, so that's very good to keep in mind that it's, you know, no, you, know, you can know that it's going to be safe is the best way to put it. Um, I will also tell you that we're going to get a merit scholarship just off of acceptance. So the way that we work things here at Garden Web is, you know, we get those transcripts in, and because we are test optional, we're basing everything off GPA. 
Um, so we're working on getting our final index together to be able to know, you know, saying, hey, this student gets this amount of scholarship and so on. And we'll get those, you know, finalized. And as we start accepting students here in the near future for this upcoming year, as soon as we get your information, as soon as we get you accepted, you're automatically going to be pegged with a certain merit scholarship. And we can go ahead and call you and we can say, hey, you know, you're getting $10,000 for your great grades in high school, you know, and, and so on. Again, once the FAFSA is in, once we get your application in, it takes several weeks for us to get a finalized financial aid package together for you, but it will highlight all those things. It'll have your merit scholarship on there. It'll have any athletic scholarship if you're an athlete. It'll have your FAFSA and all the financial aid you get from there. If you report to us any external scholarships, like I just discussed looking at fastweb.com, or if you have you know, an outside connection somewhere, somebody that's you know, giving you a scholarship, you can you know, share that with us and we'll, we'll update your package that way. I do wanna highlight that we are looking to start up a marching band um, this upcoming year. So something Melissa said earlier actually sparked my memory on that. If you are interested in music, even if you're not a music major, but you play an instrument and you're interested in marching band, that's something definitely to keep in mind, especially if you're looking at Gardner Webb, because we're, we're definitely wanting that to grow in the next coming year. So we're gonna be offering some scholarships for that. I can also share with you that we offer some other ones. Uh, we have a minister's dependent scholarship you get. So if you're like a child uh, in the ministry, something like that. We also have a church match scholarship. Apologize, my phone going off. Um, we also offer a church match scholarship. And in saying that, it's up to full tuition. So for instance, if your church were to give you a certain amount of money, we're going to match that to, this, to the T, up to what our tuition costs. Um, so that's something definitely to keep in mind. But again, um, I will reiterate one more time, just because, you know, sticker shyness is a very big issue, especially with private schools, just because we, as being brutally honest as I can, we are not cheap schools. But the quality and the value that comes with paying what you're paying for your education is the, you know, one of the most important things to keep in mind. So definitely get that fast fan and definitely reach out to us with any questions or concerns you have as far as finances go. Sure, we have a, a couple questions here. The first one's from Carolina. She says, if we participated in research with our local university during high school um, and intend to continue in college, what would be the best way to provide a sample of the research paper? Um, Carolina, really, if, if your university requires an essay, um, like right now, Charleston Southern is test flexible. So um, if you decide not to turn in scores and um, you're turning in an essay, then that research paper is going to be perfect for that. Um, you also, if you have like any kind of high school paper that you've already written, um, that'll work just fine for the essay as well for us. Um, so you can turn it in a number of ways. One way is you could attach it to the application itself. Um, another way would be just to email it to your enrollment counselor. Um, so really either or would work perfectly fine for us. That would be the same for us if you decide to do test optional. I could show the same answer um, in regards to that. You know, feel free to just submit that to us and we'll use it uh, to the best of our ability in regards to the test option ability. So. Um, Josie has a question here. She says, are there scholarships or grants for immigrant students with only a green card? Um, Josie, that's an excellent question that um, I actually don't currently have the answer to for Charleston Southern University. Um, we do actually have a, a specific enrollment counselor that works with students that have green cards and things like that. And so um, really, she's going to be your best resource for questions like that. Um, but if you just reach out to our admissions office, then they'd be happy to give you um, her contact information and she'd be able to answer that for you. I would encourage you to do that for Southern Westland as well, for our counselor. And the same goes for Gardner Webb. I would highly recommend reaching out. We have a um, you know, counselor that would definitely be able to help with that. Awesome. So um, I think one of the biggest questions about going from homeschool to college is what is the transition like and is that an easy transition or hard transition? Um, I myself personally was not homeschooled, but um, I had quite a few friends in college that were and I also work in the office of a lot of um, students that were homeschooled and they just had an excellent experience. 
um, going into a small Christian university just because one, it wasn't as overwhelming to be on a small campus that it was a large campus. Um, it's really easy to just get lost in the crowd. And when you're sitting in giant lecture halls with like hundreds and hundreds of students, um, to just feel like a number and not really feel known. Um, and it, it really is a culture shock, I would say, um, to go from homeschooling to a large university. Not to say that uh, that's not for you. Um, that could be exactly what you want to do and that could be where you thrive and that would be awesome. Um, but I would say for the homeschool students that I've known and, and that I'm in close communication with, they really just appreciated the smallness of our campus, being able to see the same people around, have professors that know their names and things like that. Um, it was also really, really easy for them to make friends because you're already used to having to be a little bit more extroverted and outgoing. Um, so it just came really easy in college for them to be able to do that. Whereas um, a lot of students that just went to either a public university or maybe even a private university, they don't really have to do that as much because they're constantly around other people who are doing that. Um, so it just became a little bit easier for them um, just because they were already wired to do those things. I think that's great, Morgan. And yes, um, it sometimes is easier coming to a close-knit, Christ-centered university like Southern Westland and some of our others as well is maybe a little bit easier of a transition. Some of the homeschool students that I've spoken with and also the moms have um, stated that that was the case. They made it quite an easy transition coming in. I know um, one thing, a tip I had from one homeschooler that attended Southern Westland was extremely successful, thought that perhaps could have helped her maybe a little more in high school working on note-taking skills, maybe some research skills, which uh, because you're not having to sit and listen to lectures as much or teachers just talking like you might in high school, you have a more flexible environment at home, of course, and uh, maybe you're ahead and learn just as much, but it's just a different environment. So she even recommended perhaps going on to YouTube and watch it. There's tons of lectures on YouTube and maybe practice and listen into a few college lectures in that setting and what note taking you may take off that and just to get a little more prepared. But again, the dual enrollment that we've all recommended is fantastic. So you can have some firsthand experience with that, especially if you're able to take it on a campus. So whether you take with us like we offer, you could take one course or get a whole associate's degree or anything in between. So those options are just fantastic at universities. And then also from a mom's perspective, one of my coworkers actually homeschooled her daughter all the way to college. And she just reiterated the need to teach independence to your student. And I'm sure that most of you would already be doing that. But she just reiterated that she really tried to focus on that while her daughter was in high school. And that really helped, like letting her make some of those phone calls, letting her set up some on appointments, letting her send everything to the admissions counselor, fill out her own application for dual enrollment, go you know, tour the college campus. Of course, she had come with her, but letting them just take charge of some of those things. And she said she felt like more than anything that prepared her when she got to college because she didn't feel like socialization was in any way a problem. Because I know a lot of you are already out there with your groups and your friends and have lots of other people that may homeschool that are with you. But that didn't seem to be any issue at all. But it was more the sitting in a, a classroom setting and acquire, requiring, um, you know, the, acquiring the skills needed for that seemed to help a little more than anything doing those dual enrollment classes. Those are some awesome responses, um, Morgan and Melissa, both very well input on that. I would tell you that as a homeschooler, and again, just what I would anticipate that you're thinking is the, the fear that may come alongside of stepping into a college and thinking, oh my goodness, you know, we're, I'm no longer the only student in the classroom. I'm in a classroom with, thank goodness, in the, in the you know, situation with our institutions, very small numbers of students, but in some schools, you know, hundreds in a single auditorium. Um, but again, I highlight that as a perk, you know, being in those smaller classrooms, getting that one-on-one -on -one time with your professor is going to be just like having one-on-one -on -one time with somebody that you may have, you know, had teaching you at home. So that's something definitely to keep in mind. I would highly recommend when you get to a university and you get involved um, to do that to the most possible extent that you can, just because getting involved and getting used to it, and it really helps to open the doors for you. It helps you make connections in and outside of college. It'll help you to make lifelong friends. It'll make the entire transition process a whole lot easier. It won't be all about the classes. It'll just be about the experience of college. So that's something definitely to keep in mind as well. Um, I'll pass it back over to Morgan. Uh, it looks like we've got about five minutes left. So I want her to be able to get any last final minute you know, remarks in. 
Yeah, thanks, Toby. Y'all made some excellent points. And um, something that we just want y'all to feel is um, feeling comfortable when you're coming into college. And um, I know that some of us have some homeschool events that we host. And so that might be something that you might want to ask about. Um, a few of us also have like homeschool pages on our website. So feel free to visit those. Um, but yeah, if there's any homeschool events or anything going on at the college, it's like open to students, feel free to pop by and um, meet people and connect with other people and ask questions. And um, really that's just the best way to, to get in there before college starts. But with these last five minutes, Melissa and Toby, do y'all have anything that we might have missed talking about that you wanted to add? I wanted to add that one of um, our students that graduated and she went on to a large State University to get a master's degree and now is working on her PhD. And um, she just mentioned to encourage you to feel so encouraged that you are prepared because I know sometimes there's a little bit of stress, you know, maybe wondering, am I prepared for college and have I done the right thing? But going through the homeschool curriculums and all that you do to prepare, she said it was such a relief and you know, she got to the university level and everything was fine and she's going to be very successful. So just wanted to encourage homeschool families for the fantastic job that you're doing. And thank you for being with us. I would add one more thing and this again is just my personal experience and understanding homeschoolers, you know, you all are amazing at managing your own time because you are homeschooled. You're having to teach yourself in some capacities to where, you know, in public school, they're on a set schedule. So they're, they're kind of already used to having things told to them on how to do stuff. And you all had to try to figure it out yourselves, which is a lot of what college is like. Um, you have to figure things out yourselves. You have to maintain your own kind of schedule. You have to plan things out and, you know, say, Hey, I got to make time to study. I got to make time to eat, you know, stuff like that. So you're already ahead of the game. It might seem like you're stressed out because you don't think you're ready or you're not ready to adult, I guess is the term, but you know, you really are um, just have confidence in yourself and you're going to do great. But thank you again for everything. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can uh, just email the admissions office and we'd be happy to talk to you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, so when you do close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. Um, so we would really appreciate any feedback you can provide today. Um, also, this is just one of the many sessions that are being hosted um, through CACRO. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions at CACRAO.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at CAC rao.org. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.